it obviously varies massively. Um, you know, you'd get you get like the the classic Twitter trolls. Uh, that would be like tweeting you like horrible stuff, being like, you know, like kill yourself, like you know, like, like fucking gen- hell, gen- <laughs> really, like really offensive stuff. Joe presents Baz and Andrew's House of Rugby together with Guinness. Rubesti, Rubesti, tell me like just don't read anything about yourself. Whenever, um, that first whenever it was actually it was just after the first like si- the twenty eighteen Six Nations, and like I was at that point I was kind of like, Rubesti, like, <laughs> you know, I'm going to read stuff about myself because it's all great at the moment, um, and I suppose it's going really to be whenever it starts to not be great every single time you step on the pitch is when you start to, um, you know, that's when it starts to affect you. So yeah, I, my my advice would be the same as as it was for me. Um, was just don't read anything, um, and do that from the start so that you don't have to figure this out when you're three or four years into your career. Yeah, the Twitter detox actually has been going for a long time now. Like, um, I I, I don't really suppose that. Well, actually, I suppose nobody has re- really noticed uh, because like I wouldn't have been a big tweeter anyway. Tweet tweeter, yeah, I think it's the right term, but um, yeah, like. It was just after it was after the World, directly after the World Cup, uh, that first monster game. Um I came back and played like um after the game, before even texting the friends, family, uh, my girlfriend, I just went straight on to Twitter to see what people were saying about me and I was just like this, yeah. I was like, This is incredibly unhealthy. Um so as I I just deleted the app off my phone and I think I I hadn't planned or maybe deleting it permanently. I just like right, I need a bit of a break from this. But um yeah, I haven't been on about seven or eight months and to be honest, I'm not really planning on going back on it anytime soon. Um <clears throat> can you tell us a bit more then about we're not looking for exactly what people were saying, but give us a bit more insight uh, into into the the opinions of some of the people. It obviously varies massively. Um you know you'd get you get like the the classic Twitter trolls uh, that would be like tweeting you like horrible stuff, being like you know, like kill yourself, like you know, like, like fucking gen- hell, gen- <laughs> really like really offensive stuff. Um, those didn't bother me that much, weirdly enough, because I knew they were like they were just saying these things to get a reaction, and it probably wasn't their actual opinion. Do you know they were just like out mm-hmm. there trying to get a bite out of you. And um, so that those didn't really bother me that much. But it was Did you like those? Did you like those ones? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, like it was more the ones that would like people would be like their genuine opinion was I was like a crap rugby player. Those were the ones that would actually really get to me. Um, which is weirdly enough, but um, but yeah, they just ranged from uh, you know. People saying that I didn't have a good game to I shouldn't be playing for Ulster, I shouldn't be playing for Ireland to, you know, uh, I don't want, like, I'm tired of seeing Jacob Stockfield doing this or doing that. And, like, you know, like nine times out of ten, you'd read them and you'd go, I don't think, you know, they go, they, they don't know as much as I do and, and their opinion isn't actually right. But at the same time, when, you, when you're when you reading these tweets over and over and over and over and over again, you start to, create a narrative in your head that they're actually right um so yeah just decided that it wasn't a healthy place to be a healthy thing to be doing or a healthy place to be and instead of just get rid of it but have you let yourself think about rugby jacob or looking forward to inter pros or have you even thought a little bit potentially about um lions next summer um, yes to all those questions obviously looking forward like there's that there's that eight that we've been given now it's 22nd of august so obviously you know Realistically, I hope that that we're playing because I'm that and you know itching to get back on the pitch in any in any degree. So yeah, I'm hoping that the that we'll be back back at that date. Um, in terms of the Lions, like yeah, it's the kind of thing that's always going to be in in the back of your head a wee bit. Um, <clears throat> you know, there's obviously there's obviously a lot of rugby to be played between now and then, and and you know, if the team was getting picked now, I, I don't know if I if I would be picked or not. Um, but like. Just by the time you know, Warren Gatlin's making a selection. Like I want, I want to be in the position where, where like it's a no-brainer that he has to have me. Um, you know, and, and that can be done, and you know, in a matter of eight months. Um, so that's that's the plan anyway. 
kind of forget how how good how good he was because Raj took over in such a you know dominating style when when he did. We we wouldn't anybody up here wouldn't forget how good he is. To be fair, mm. he's really he's yeah he'd be a real hero up here. To be fair, mm. um, he was I I loved David Humphreys growing up, um, and a friend of mine then I I played for prior schools in upper six. And a friend of mine, there was my dad um, got a picture of David Humphreys at the rugby club one night in a raffle or something. And then a friend of mine sent it off to David Humphreys and he signed it and gave it back to me. And uh, congratulations on your selection for our schools. I uh, look forward to seeing how your rugby career pro- uh, progresses. And this went up on my wall. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I was, and then fast forward um, two years, three years. And then I was, I was playing week in, week out with him. And it was class, class, wow. class experience. Uh, I I remember getting um getting a rugby ball. Our monster played Harlequins in a cup match, and the ball went into the stand. And like the lovely little Limerick lad I was, I shoved it up my jumper and uh, and stole it basically. But it was the one that had the big H on it. It was that real lovely old school Gilbert. And uh, after the game, Woody was coming out of the dressing room, and I I waited around. I must have been fourteen, fifteen. And got Woody to sign it. I even remember him looking at it, kind of going like, "You've definitely stolen this ball." And I was like, "Yeah, what are you going to do?" So he he signed it, and I took it on a holidays with me that summer. And uh, I called it the ball, Woody. Such a bit of a loser, but um, <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was over in Portugal. I'd be down with a pool and toss the ball around. And if the ball went near the water, I'd be like, "Woody," because his his name would the, the autograph would come off it. So I was like, "Well, Guys, sir." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get so ratty if I like there's all these other kids around the pool wanting to play and I was like don't let the ball go near the water you can't rub off that but then Martin Curry and Austin Healy uh, arrived to the pool one day I, 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 they must have it must have been after the, the Lions in 97 because they were fucking stratospheric in terms of like um, stardom and I was like oh my god they, they arrived big massive rip lads and uh, I was in the pool and I saw my dad going over and with my ball and got the two of them to sign the ball. And I was like, no, <laughs> <laughs> they're ruining it. So I was, and then I was in the pool trying to wash off their signatures on it, uh, off it. And uh, I think I did. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just cat. See, I love nostalgia. Just catapulted me back into it. 